Things on this side of Cod County are still looking pretty bad. We saw a lot of debris earlier in the Denton community, which is about halfway between Newport and Hartford. But Hartford is mostly made up of rafting companies along the river, other businesses, and the people that work at them. Now, luckily, a lot of those workers live up the mountain from the river and their homes weren't affected. However, they're now without a job. Primarily, it's all rafting for us. Um, we rely on that tourism um, and we don't know what the river looks like. Um, a lot of our businesses, um, we didn't have insurance. We couldn't afford flood insurance. It was so expensive. So myself, uh, I've lost everything. Michelle Cuellar is the owner of the Bean Trees Cafe and the Bean Sprout. She, along with volunteers, have spent the week cleaning out the now ruined building. This is a zone where we're having to be careful about our health. There are a lot of respiratory things going on. This mud is contaminated with who knows what. Um, I had a little chemical burn yesterday I had to go to the uh, doctor for, and that was just from the mud being on my skin. Hartford sits right on the Pigeon River. When the storm began, river manager at Rafting in the Smokies, Jeff Polite, attempted to save some of their business. Um, but within, you know, an hour, maybe an hour and a half, um, it was up, consumed the building, uh, and we had to evac because they were closing all the roads. What roads were left? Losing vehicles and rafts was just the start of the damage. We've got a rope obstacle course and a four-sided climbing wall. Um, that was all supported and accessed by a suspension bridge that went across the river. Unfortunately, the debris in the water, the force of the water, wiped all that out. Uh, it was, at one time, a 10-acre island. Uh, now it's about a five-acre island. With the town relying on tourism, business owners aren't sure where to go from here, but they're determined to rebuild. We'll make it happen here. I don't know how long that will be, but we're optimistic and we're strong and uh, supportive of each other. So we hope to get our industry back and what timeline, I don't know, but we'll keep plugging away. this Thank you.
Good evening. Glad you're here with us tonight for WVLT News at 530. I'm Brittany Tarwater. We really appreciate you joining us tonight as so many of our hearts across East Tennessee are broken because of the devastating flooding left behind by Hurricane Helene. Here's some video from Del Rio today. Our WVLT News anchor Casey Wheelis shot this video. She is on the ground in Newport and seeing scenes just like this one. Homes washed away, washed right off of their foundations because of the severe flooding ripping through parts of East Tennessee. Casey was speaking with a woman today who lost nearly everything, yet she owns a thrift store in the area. And what she's doing is gathering supplies and using that almost as a hub for people who need items to come by and pick up the items that they need. This is the story that we're seeing from so many who have lost nearly everything, if not everything, who are the ones turning around, offering a hand to help. Unbelievable. Not anything that you could describe. You know, you would see homes going down the rivers, belongings going down the rivers, people trying to get to help people and the roads were gone and you can't get to anybody. Just so much devastation. This is it here still. I mean, look at this, so much water, so much debris that is left over even days now after the storm ripped through. Hartford is whitewater rafting country. You may know that. And now guides who are housing, their housing is in pieces, just floating down the Pigeon River. One of the big employers in town that's rafting in the Smokies lost its zip line, climbing wall, and a bridge. Our Ben Cathy is in Cock County as cleanup continues. Many of the business owners in Hartford tell me they simply couldn't afford flood insurance. What they really need right now is man hours, and the volunteers are coming together from the Crossing Church in Kodak, from the Okoe River, the Nolichucka River, and the Gatlinburg Fire Department. Now they need you to step in. You know, we're here, everybody's here, everybody's in the fight, and we're going to clean up, and we're going to get back, and we're going to be here to take people out. Uh, it's going to be difficult, you know, it's been hard, and we're all kind of bummed out right now. But uh, we're going we're gonna to be here. We're going to get it cleaned up. Uh, here in a few weeks, it'll look a lot like home again. And it's just going to take some time, but we're going to get there. This place is strong. The people here are strong. All of Hartford's business owners huddled together. They are still determined to open the 2025 rafting season. That's March 1st. That's even though their raft put in and the takeout don't exist at all anymore. That gets ratings, but they would stay on it and be investigating the claims you and others are making. FEMA's not doing their job. People are trapped. I mean, I don't really see that 24 seven on the news. I see the election 24 seven on the news. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me at all. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, every kind of disaster that you all cover, that seems to be the case, right? Smoke screen over here, but we're not talking about what's really going on. And, and I just, I do have to take a moment to thank you guys so much for what you do. I, I mean, I was getting my news firsthand from you guys about my family because there was so much going on. I mean, yeah, they would let us know a little bit, but they couldn't keep us constantly updated. Right. And, you know, we're getting news about everybody through, through you guys. Thank you so much, very much for what y'all do. You know, it's kind of crazy to me. This I'm not saying this to pat ourselves on the back, but I can't tell you how many times I cover a story somewhere. Let's just say, I don't know, East Palestine or wherever. And I see in the comments, I live like 10 minutes away from here and I didn't know this was happening. My local media is not even covering it. I mean, yes. it's just crazy. Yes. It's just yes. crazy the, the yes. kind of desert of information uh, some places. Uh, lastly, just talk about, obviously you live an hour there, but what should people know that isn't being shown on the news, particularly in Asheville? I mean, the way you described it about dead bodies that you could smell, uh, people trapped. Uh, yeah, they, what, what do you um, want people to know? 
there's information out there. There's actually a story on a platform, um, you know, the Double T platform. I don't know if I could say it or whatever, but they um, there's stories on there. This man was delivering supplies up to Asheville, uh, particularly the Swannanoa area. And he described um, as the water was receding, there were piles of bodies, including children. The smell was foul. He went home and he checked himself into a mental institution. Jesus. His story is on the media. It, it, it's on platforms. You can find it. Um, that's that's how bad it is. Um, wow. I, I just, you know, it, it, there's mudslides, there's floods, there's down power lines. People don't have supplies. Um, and it, FEMA made an appearance and left. They're, they're not, they're, there's no, you know, the, the people are rescuing the people. Um, I did see some search and rescue, but uh, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing FEMA. And I was in Asheville, I, you know, I was in Asheville. I was up in the disaster area. I've been to Asheville. Uh, my sister lives in Lake Bluer. You know, I've been in contact with people all over. start something right now when I know that there are people stuck in various locations that we see that are being still rescued. When you're watching people stand out on the mountain and they're trying to reflect a mirror up to a helicopter, okay? When I'm, when, I mean, we are traumatized in this region and you out there are gonna be traumatized too if all the stories ever come out. I am hearing from people in North Carolina and Upper East Tennessee. Stories that I absolutely do believe, but because I wasn't there to see it, I'm, I'm hesitant to pass the word because again, I'm trying to keep people focused. It is worse than you know. So this puts people like me in a precarious situation. But I want you to focus on prayer and I want you to focus on your preps. Help if you can. Be vet everything. Don't believe everything, but vet everything. Have a backup plan for your donation spot locations in which you're dropping off. And try your best to be peaceful. Please do so. Lives are depending on that right now. Lives are depending on that right now. And the horrible thing is, is we are in, we here we are one month from the election. And I don't know about you. <clears throat> we need to have this election. Let's not lend ourselves to not having an election. I hope and pray that you feel what I'm trying to do here. I know some are not, and I can't change that. I also feel that the devil is working really hard on people right now. We have to rebuke that and push against it by helping as best as we can. And sometimes setting ourselves aside and focusing, you know, it, it, some people just wanna pop off with their anger. I, I know, but it doesn't in the end get us anywhere. And um, we have to save people, okay? Focus there. And if you're like, what do I do? I've sent money, but I live six states away. What do you do? You prepare as hard as you can at your location because we are showing you that you matter. I didn't lose anything, but because, and thank God for, I won't even go into my own emotion about that. Thank God for that because A, we, we're, we try to be prepared people as best we can. And I was physically able to, we are physically able to run and run and run and help, which is what we should be doing. But because of that preparedness, we can help others. This is that moment I've been telling you about for so long. 
You may not be directly affected, but because you made the choices to join this lifestyle and do the best that you can, you make the immediate difference. Showing up on Saturday and Sunday, showing up Friday night, Saturday and Sunday after this hit last week was crucial because you know, you may have the National Guard come in. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. You may have big teams come in from other states. But let's be honest. We need it, right? We need it. This is going to last for a long time. We need it. But let's be honest. Those that showed up Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the locals that put their feet on the ground in whatever capacity they could may have made the biggest life or death difference that's where your cup that's where you will come in that's why you should prepare it's not just for you it is your ability to be accessible physically to go elsewhere and help because you did the right things god is warning us god has been warning us god has been telling us and i know you get frustrated and you're mad. there's no th- th- what are the words there are no words She just didn't know the, the name, so I'm not going to send people off in the mountains that don't know how to do a map. I need a map. I can't get out of town. I'm about to make my truck the, the street sweeper because when y'all drive down there now and it's dry, everybody's getting sick. So I'm going to spray paint on top of my hood, and it it's probably going to say Hartford Street Sweeper just so the helicopters can see it because we're doing this ourselves and that's not fair i need help we need bodies to clean this to go over a mountain and save people who wants to rescue people who wants to jump out of a helicopter you know You got enough room for more? <laughs> there you go, right there. Excellent. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. We have so many people helping. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got three organizations right now actively coming together to uh, fund supplies. I'm making a U turn right now. I just got a call uh, from a buddy um, who is uh, over at the Publix and uh, has them situated to give a bunch of. Uh, uh, water and some other things. Um, so heading that way, I've got uh, Lowe's that I'm following up with. Um, a great friend from there is putting me in contact uh, with one or two of the store managers so we can source uh, supplies to help clean up, uh, maybe some toiletries, whatever else we can put together there. And then there's a third company um, that's coming together right now and they are putting together a, uh, a donation. Okay, so at the Publix right now and got this guy back here. You guys know him? That guy right there. We're gonna load up trailers because of that guy and his team are gonna load up trailers full of uh, supplies, paper goods, water, all sorts of stuff to get people right now. So just think of this guy, be like this guy right here, right? Doing more for people every chance he gets throughout his whole life. Live an abundance mindset, it's beautiful. Past the wrap here, my turn. All right, so leaving Publix right now, we've got that thing full. Uh, we've got more uh, more on the way. So huge, huge shout out, uh, not only to Tom and Brun Masonry and his buddy Scott, uh, that's helping us out, but uh, Dave, Troy, Rich, and everybody at Publix for helping us get all that situated. Amazing. 
Um, really, really appreciate you guys and what you're doing out here in Maryville. Help your community. Thank you all. Yep, we're doing it. Got to get these supplies. Don't Continue have time. For seven miles. Just got to the uh, the church up here, Pigeon Valley, I believe, and talked to the pastor. They've got volunteers. They're grabbing a whole bunch of stuff. These people are coming through to get things, and we're going to get unloaded. So they're doing awesome work out here, guys. Amazing work out here in Hartford. Love it. They have barbecue set up. They are feeding people. They are getting supplies out. This is amazing. This is what the volunteer state is all about right here. Yeah, I love it.